Hi everyone and welcome to Irene's DIY Addiction channel. I think any gardener dreams of a garden that would look beautiful throughout the year, will require a little or low maintenance and would not need a lot of money to create it. If you want a garden like this, then a Japanese style garden is the answer. And today I want to show how I made my own one. I've always loved Japanese style and I always try to incorporate Japanese or Eastern vibes into my garden. I have a maple tree growing here for many years together with hostas and grasses and flowers, but this part of my garden is more an eclectic one and I wanted to create something more clean, more Japanese in style and also I wanted to collect all of my small rhododendrons there. I've started with cleaning out the space. I've decided to make a new rhododendron garden in a little abandoned space near the fence. This part of the garden is very visible from our barbecue zone, but it wasn't very decorative, just some hostess and the only nice touch was a hydrangea. So the first thing I'm doing is removing most of the hostess and other plants. I had quite a tough time removing all those hostas. Some of them had been growing here for many years and they were just huge. The good thing is they transplant really easily at any time of the year, so I moved them to other areas of the garden. Some were too big for one person, so Gary helped me with taking them out. It was really hard and really heavy, but after some hard work we did it. The plants I'll keep here are the three newly planted rhododendrons, a Solomon seal plant and the hydrangea, of course. As you can see, I have a green fence here. It is covered with hop wines and although they look nice, I wanted to separate all the other plants from the hop, since it's very vigorous and can be too aggressive to the other plants. So I'm digging in a wheat berry edging along the fence. I'm placing it to separate ferns as well. These are ostrich ferns and they can be quite invasive too. I'm digging out a little trench Installing the edging vertically to sit about an inch above the ground, filling the trench with soil and tamping it down. After that, I've started filling the garden with plants. I love tapiri hemispheres, typical in Japanese gardens, and I've decided to plant several spirias here. I could use boxwoods, of course, but boxwood needs winter protection in our climate and I wanted this part of the garden to work without any protection. Well, except for a hydrangea that still needs it. I feel like I have to protect too many plants for winter in the garden already. Spurias are fully hardy in our climate and I had several bushes growing around, so I've transplanted them here. I used the Little Princess and Golden Princess varieties. I've also planted some grasses here. The first one is a Japanese forest grass. I think it works perfect for adding eastern vibes to the space. And I've planted some plantain leaf sedges. I have clay soils and all the sedges grow perfect here. Rhododendrons have a really small root ball. This makes them easy to transplant, but they also dry out really quickly. So watering them well is essential. I'll use drip irrigation here, just like in the rest of my garden. This is just a hose with little holes. It has a special self-cleaning system inside it to prevent the holes from being clogged up with mud. And in my case, it works perfectly. I've placed the hose around every bigger bush to cover the whole area. After that, we've brought a hypotufa ball that will be a water feature to try it out and placed several stones here. We've had just a few, I wish there were more, but this is all we've got. Gary has a really good eye in placing them nicely, but all the same, it took quite some time before we liked the result. I've also added several hostas here. My favorite one is this tiny hosta. This is the blue mouse ears variety. 
to that. I've mulched the soil with large boric. It's a little bit too bright after it's just applied, but now after its first winter, it looks much better. I liked the basic look, but that autumn our neighbors decided to put up a new fence. After that, all the hop wines were gone and we've decided to cover the fence with bamboo mats. I really love how they look and they work for Japanese styles so well. These mats are really easy to install. You just want to unroll it along the fence and attach to the existing fence with pieces of wire. As I told you, we didn't have a lot of stones on hand, so what I decided to do is to fake them. I've made molds for stones out of cardboard, connecting 4-inch strips into a ring and giving it an organic shape while attaching it to another piece of cardboard that will work as a button. Here I have to say I fell for making it really odd with many curves, so the stones ended up being too intricate. You do not need that many little curves here. As the stones are supposed to be used as a pathway, I thought it will be a good idea to reinforce them. To do this, I have cut a piece of chicken wire to the size of the molds, leaving a small allowance along the edges. And after this, I started preparing hypertufa mix. This is one porridge peat moss, one porridge vermiculite, and two porridge cement. I have also added brown dye and concrete reinforcing fibers. I'm mixing all the dry components and adding about one quart of water to make the mixture thick enough to be able to make a ball out of it. I'm filling each mold up to the half of the height and placing the chicken wire insert and after that finish filling the mold. The next day I've removed the cardboard and brushed each fake stone with a wire brush to reveal the stone texture. Peat moss is used here to make this nice hypertufa texture with many crevices and little holes all over the surface. A wire brush removes all peat moss particles very easily. Unfortunately, later I was told it was not very eco-friendly to use peat moss. I think shredded coconut fibers or shredded straw could work here as a peat moss replacement. Actually, you want any soft organic filler that would rot or wither with time. After the stones were fully cured, I realized I didn't like the color, so I mixed a deep penetrating concrete primer with water-based dyes and painted the stones a sand color. To install the stones, I'm loosening the soil and arranging the stones as I like. And after that, I'm making a base of sand for each stone. And to make the whole thing look like an old mossy pathway, I'm planting tasteless stone crop plants in between the stones. Next, I've decided a Japanese garden will not be complete without a water feature. To make it, first I'm digging a big plastic basin in to sit flesh with the ground level. I'm making the hole at the very end of the pathway so that the stones lead towards the water feature. I'm adding some sand and gravel to the bottom and installing the basin. To be able to put a decorative vessel onto the basin, I'll need some structure. I've decided to make it out of pieces of rebar. I'm placing the rebar pieces over the basin in a criss-cross manner and tying the pieces together with a wire.
and I'm cutting a piece of chicken wire to sit on top to be able to place smaller stones over it. I'm filling the plastic basin with water and placing a small solar operated water pump into it and I'm attaching a piece of plastic hose to the pump to deliver water to the upper part of the water feature. I'm also applying a piece of thin landscape fabric to prevent leaves and dirt from getting into the bottom basin and installing the rebar structure and the chicken wire cover. I've made a hyper-tufa vessel for this water feature by placing the mixture in between the two rounded plastic basins. I've used the same technique and the same recipe as with the faux stones. We're installing the hyper-tufa vessel onto the wire cover and I'm placing stones around the vessel to hide the wire. Since I was making a Japanese style water feature, I've decided it will be a good idea to make the water flow out of a bamboo faucet and since I already had a couple of bamboo stamps bought for another project, I didn't even have to buy anything. I'm cutting the bamboo stem into three pieces, an actual faucet and the two supports and sanding the top parts of the supports to be able to connect them smoothly to the faucet. Then I'm making a hole in one of the supports. I'll insert the horse here later and making another two holes in the faucet port where it will be attached to the supports. And I'm also drilling the bamboo through to remove the bamboo dividers inside the stems. I'm inserting the hose into the support and sticking it into the ground near the hypotufa vessel. And then threading the hose through the faucet port so that it is sticking out on one end. Then I'm sticking in the ground the second support. I've also added a piece of rebar here to connect it with the faucet port and cutting off the excess hose. I've plugged the solar battery into the pump and placed it high on the fence and I've hidden the wires behind the fence. To finish the look I've decided I wanted to make a Japanese lantern. I'll be making it out of the hyper mix again and therefore I'm starting with the mold. To make a curvy roof I've prepared a template using a kid umbrella as a guide and I'm cutting 8 bigger and 8 smaller pieces like that from corrugated cardboard. I'm bending the parts to make them curvy. and connecting them together using masking type. I've ended up with a curvy brim and after some adjustments it looks just as I wanted it to be. I'm also connecting the smaller pieces into a rounded top part. And finally I'm connecting the top port and the brim port together. I've covered the whole surface with masking tape to make it waterproof. And finally I've added sides to the mold. To make the middle part of the lantern I've used an insulation board and I've made six rectangular pieces. I'm making angular cuts at the sides of each rectangle to be able to connect all of them into a hexagonal prism. To make little windows on each side of the prism I'm hot gluing smaller rectangles to the center of each part and wrapping them with masking tape so the finished piece has a smooth surface. 
and finally I am assembling the prism and attaching it to the cardboard bottom. I've wanted to try to make a faux curved base for the lantern. To imitate this, first I've made another hexagonal prism, but a very wide and shallow one. Then I've cut a Dollar Tree plastic napkin into little rectangle pieces and I'm hot gluing a piece of napkin onto each port of the base. Finally, I'm connecting the base ports and securing it with masking tape on the outside. I'm filling the molds with hypertufa mixture. I've also added some chicken wire into each part to reinforce the whole structure. To make the bottom base for the lantern, I've decided just to fill a plastic bucket with the mixture. And the next day I brush all the parts with wire brush. The faux carving made with plastic napkins actually looks very nice. I also added a small topper to the roof port using a plastic massage cup as a mold, but I didn't like how it looked, so I've added some mixture right over the roof and made the top port more curvy and the topper a bit more pointed. I let the ports sit for about 3 weeks to fully cure as usual and finally assemble the lantern. I used concrete mix to connect all the ports together. And finally, the garden is finished. I love how it looks. This peaceful retreat looks amazing throughout the year. And in autumn, I have a high range of flowering here. In winter, I love looking at a snowy lantern. In summer, it is all green with beautiful tapiry bushes and grasses. And the spring is the best because the rhododendrons are in full bloom. I hope you liked today's video. I also want to remind you that I have separate videos about creating the lantern, the stones and the water feature in case uh, the instructions were too brief for you in this video. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next one. Bye!